bankers were accused of splintering society because they created debt and greed and division. All the more reason to give to the church, the place where people were brought together. And in Florence, there was no more communal building than the baptistry, where every single citizen, rich or poor, was christened. In 1401, a great pair of bronze doors was commissioned to the glory of God. And Giovanni di Bicci, the head of the Medici family, was on the committee that chose the artist. Now, the Medici involvement with art in Florence begins right here on this spot. And the artist whom Giovanni di Bicci and his fellow committee members chose to create this great work was a man called Lorenzo Ghiberti. Ghiberti invented a totally new method of sculpting in bronze. Each panel was cast in a single piece, which gives these images a tremendously organic quality. Each one's a story distilled to its essentials, a miniature drama from the life of Christ. Here's the Last Supper, apostles hunched round the table. Here's Christ on his donkey, entering Jerusalem. And there's even an image of the traders money bags and all, being driven from the temple. A small reminder of the ancient Christian distrust of riches. Now, it took Ghiberti and his workshop more than 20 years to complete these great doors. They were finished in 1424, just five years before Giovanni de Bici died. And I think that when he looked up at what he and his fellow committee members had been responsible for commissioning. It was so much in excess of what anyone could have expected. This really is one of the great masterpieces of early Renaissance art. But I think it alerted him, and indeed the whole Medici family, to the potential of art. Giovanni's son, Cosimo il Vecchio, expanded the Medici Bank across Europe. Ci posso fare un espresso, grazie. And with new wealth came new opportunities. Cosimo was a political genius who turned the Medici into the most powerful family in Florence. But he also knew that the city was a republic, in name at least, where everybody was supposed to be equal. So he dressed in the plainest clothes and even rode a donkey instead of a horse. He was determined to do everything he could to wipe the stain of usury from his family's reputation. This is the Monastery of San Marco. In the 1430s, the Pope promised Cosimo redemption if he would pay for its construction. A heaven-sent opportunity to launder his piles of dirty money. It was fairly standard practice for extremely rich people to endow a chapel to commission a cycle of religious frescoes. But here, the Medici had paid for the construction of an entire monastery. This was a completely unprecedented act of private patronage. It seems that as far as Cosimo El Vecchio was concerned, when it came to the state of his eternal soul, money really was no object. San Marco was the home of the austere Dominican order. Each monk had a tiny cell containing a single fresco by Fra Angelico and his assistants of Christ's Passion, a focus for their spiritual contemplation. Cosimo, the moneylender, had even made his way inside the temple. Now, this is the entrance to Cosimo's own cell, and right over the door there's an inscription that makes official 
the nature of the exchange that's taking place here. It says that the Pope, Eugenius IV, promises that Cosimo de Medici will be absolved for all his sins in exchange for having built this monastery. How typical somehow of this money man, this banker, to get his own pardon, to get his own salvation in writing. Now, at first sight, Cosimo's cell seems pretty much like all the others. He, too, gets an image of the crucifixion to contemplate. But while it's hardly luxurious, and I should stress that Cosimo came here, he fasted, he prayed, he did penitence for the sake of his eternal soul, his chamber is more luxurious than the rest, because whereas they are, if you like, single bedrooms, he gave himself the equivalent of a hotel suite. Look, there's a whole other chamber. And up here, on the wall of this second space, he's looking at an image of the three wise men who come to the infant Jesus bearing gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Cosimo chose one of Fra Angelico's most gifted pupils, but not so gotsily, to create a painting that would transform the Medici image. I think what Cosmo's done here is he's asked himself, how can I, how can I release us? How can I release us, Medici, us usurers, from the taint of our profession? And I think he's combed the Bible for an example of rich men who are also good. And more or less the only people to whom that applies are the Magi, who are obviously a kind of visual metaphor or alter ego for Cosimo and the rest of his family because they bring gifts to Jesus. What is this whole monastery if not a splendid gift to Christ? became so obsessed with their new heroes, they joined a fraternity celebrating the three wise men. And they wanted the whole of Florence to share in their devotion. Every year on the 6th of January, a huge procession would take to the streets of Florence. Hundreds of people would dress up in brightly coloured clothes and they'd have with them a whole menagerie of wild animals, apes, baboons, tigers, cheetahs. They were reenacting the journey of the wise men and at the centre of it all, wearing gold crowns and bearing gifts, playing the part of the Magi themselves were the Medici. The parade of the Magi would snake its way past Cosimo's own house, the Palazzo Medici. Inside the Palazzo, only the most privileged visitors were invited to see a room where, away from the prying eyes of the city, Cosimo could indulge his wildest fantasy. In Cosimo's private chapel is a spectacular fresco showing the journey of the Magi to Bethlehem. Once again, Cosimo turned to the artist Benozzo Gozzoli, who'd painted the same subject in San Marco. But there's no trace of austerity here. It's a blaze of colour with a cast of hundreds. Gozzoli even had the audacity to insert himself and members of the Medici family into this biblical scene. At its centre, we find wily old Cosimo himself, dressed in a rather muted black robe. But of course, 
<laughs> this is the one moment when Cosimo, cautious Cosimo, is actually indulging himself in, a, in an orgy, I think, of self-congratulation. Look how rich we've become. He looks like he might be counting. <laughs> and I think this fresco is... It's a pictorial version of counting your money, and the picture's full of gold. Above all, on the harnesses of the horses and their bridles, there's this shine, this shimmer. It's still with us today, and these, this, the taste that created this is, is the taste that created the Jenny Versace handbag. There's something fantastically vulgar about this painting. You almost wonder if the worship that Cosimo did to God in his cell at San Marco hasn't been displaced to the world of consumer durables. It's, 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 it's an, an incredible celebration of the sheer naked joy of capitalism.